Western song will be uh, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 473, When We Enter. Please rise. Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Our triumphant holy day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning, my dear lovely people of God. Amen. We are gathered again to praise God. Let us now present our individual petitions before him. We have all sinned against God. Let us solicit for God's mercy, forgiveness, and compassion. I confess. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who gladdened us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through, through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer, and a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple, called the Beautiful Gate, every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leapt up, stood and walked around and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. 
When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke his name, make known among the nations his deeds, sing to him, sing his praise, proclaim all his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Glory in his holy name, rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. You descendants of Abraham, his servants, sons of Jacob, his chosen ones, he, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth, his judgments prevail. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. He remembers forever his covenant, which he made binding for a thousand generations, which he entered into with Abraham, and by his oath to Isaac. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Hallelujah. May the Spirit of God be in our hearts and our lips that we proclaim the gospel worthily and I'm blessed with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them named Cleopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to him, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early this, in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, oh, how foolish you are, how slow to heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, 
were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to our Lord Jesus Christ, both now and forever. Amen. Dear ones, this morning, I want us to reflect on the theme, the disciples on the road to Emmaus. The disciples on the road to Emmaus. The readings of today are just so rich, very rich, and it presents to us with a lot of reflection. As I carefully reflected on the first reading of today, I could discern the tone of disappointment in the voice of the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. That is now the gospel pericope. They were leaving Jerusalem, dear ones, feeling broken and disappointed in God, as we heard in the gospel. They had hoped that Jesus would liberate the Israelites from the Roman oppression. They had witnessed all the incredible things Jesus had done. Now he was dead on the cross. They were disappointed. Then there was troubling news of the empty tomb, and they were more confused. However, the disciples were talking to God about their disappointment. They talked to the risen Jesus about the dead Jesus without recognizing who was with them. However, Jesus helped to open their eyes. He helped to open their inner eyes by taking them through the scriptures and breaking bread for them. And that is the Holy Mass we are celebrating today. And when Jesus did this, their eyes opened. And having encountered him in his world and the breaking of bread, they ran back. They ran back to the apostles to share their encounter with Jesus. Like this man, my dear ones, when we apply their feelings in our individual lives, sometimes we too feel disappointed in God as they were disappointed in God. Yeah, because some of us had hoped that Jesus will alleviate their sufferings. Some had hoped that after their novena, their nine days novena, that their prayers will be heard and answered. Some had hoped that after the priest had laid his hands on them, that they will be automatically healed. 
Some had hoped that after the anointing, that their pains will go, that their cancer will be healed, that there would be a positive change in their life. Lo and behold, things are still the same. And they are disappointed. We had expected our restoration to be almost immediate, as we all expect. But to our surprise, things are the same, are still the same. We just feel like walking away from this whole faith thing. Because we are disappointed. We feel like walking away. We feel like not believing again. Dear friends, we too can find solutions to our problems. We too can find solutions to our confusions. And the solutions lie in the word of God and in the Holy Mass, the breaking of bread. Because as soon as these two men on their road to Emmaus encountered the Lord in the breaking of bread, their inner eyes were opened. And the story automatically changed. The more we ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and help us to understand the scriptures, the more the Lord will shed clear light on our lives. He removes the veil that obscures our understanding. The understanding of our life experiences and the world around us. Finally, dear ones, the more we receive Jesus in holy communion, in a state of grace, the more he brightens our lives, the more he illumines our lives, the more he enlightens us and strengthens us, and also purifies our souls, we begin to see with our inner eyes. We begin to understand more deeply our relationship with God. We begin to know and worship God, and we become eager to share the good news because our inner eyes have been opened. We become missionaries immediately, as these two men became missionaries, even to the apostles, because they brought the good news to them. Having encountered Jesus, their story never remained the same. In their disappointment, they had real encounter with Jesus. And the dear ones, I want us to know one thing. No one encounters God and remain and still remain the same. If you truly encounter God, something must happen. And I wish also to let us know that we must pray until something happens. That is push. P for pray. U for until. S for something. H happens. So you must push. That is pray until something happens. The apostles never ran away. They encountered Jesus. And therefore, dear ones, the Lord needs missionaries today.
to bring the good news to people, to share our encounters with people. The world does not need preachers again. The world needs teachers. People of faith. People of faith. Perhaps, dear ones, the world needs Jesus more than silver and gold. Let us become teachers of faith. And let us carry this encounter to other people. And remember, Jesus taught us the importance of the Holy Eucharist today. And in the Holy Eucharist, we encounter Jesus. Let us place our needs before God, our Father, rejoicing because Christ has triumphed over death and entered into glory. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, that like St. Peter, he may lead the church in witnessing to the joyful truth of the resurrection, let us pray to the Lord. For all who have dedicated their lives to God, that they may continue to be Christ's witnesses in the world. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of St. Jude, that we may grow in faith and love as we enter into this Easter season, let us pray to the Lord. For those who have little, that we may show them compassion and share our resources with them, let us pray to the Lord. For those who suffer mental, physical, or spiritual anguish, that this season, Easter season, will bring peace to their souls, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are sick and who are dying, for those who have died, for those whose names are written in the St. Jude Book of Intentions, let us pray to the Lord. And for the repose of the soul of Tunico Gomes, whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Almighty Father, your beloved Son Jesus has risen from the dead. In peace and joy, we present our prayers to you through the same risen Lord who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of my hands, to become for us the bread of life. Bless God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of my hands, to become for us a spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
the truly right and just that do the under salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with the paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray, and send them down your spirit upon them like they do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this a memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, you are just spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis Apple, Edward, the Bishop, Gregory, the Zori Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them in the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that we, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be coherent to eternal life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, Us, Lord, we pray from every evil and gracious word, grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamp of God.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. We pray, O oh Lord, that the 
reverent reception of the sacrament of your son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying our Lord by your life. Immaculate Mary.